Hello everyone and welcome back to Tiresome. Hello. <laughs> We've got father today and that is because uh, not only are we doing painting again to the scimitar uh, which is uh, looking actually really good in the light um, but we're also going to be doing the seals that's windscreen and both these side windows. Basically, this whole thing came along because we we're going to do the seals, and then I thought, well, well, you thought, yeah. well, let's do a bit of the paint around the outside of the rim because that's the best time to do it. Yeah. And then I exacerbated things and said, well, actually, we've got a week. <laughs> Maybe I could do just paint the car. <laughs> all the bodywork, and we could just do the whole thing at once and be done with it. And I know it looks easy on camera, but I tell you what, doing all that in a week and working and everything as well was an absolute killer. It's only the following day as well, by the way. I'm still wearing the same shorts I was in the previous video. <laughs> <laughs> They're already a write-off, so may as well. Right, today's plan is to sand the car down and do the seals. Not 100% on the order yet. I think we're going to do the sanding first because that creates the mess. Yep. Then uh, we'll do the seals, clean up the seal, do a bit of paint around there, put the seals in. Once the seals are in, we can then do the overcoat. It's going to be lovely, and you guys are going to love it too. We've also got some door seals as well, but... Um, one important thing is that we need to get some things. So we're actually going to go to Father's shop. Some yeah. of you may know that Father owns Reed's DIY stores in Plymouth. So let's take a little trip there and oh, show uh, you guys. Uh, uh, have, they, have they seen the workshop yet? Oh no. Do you um, want to see the workshop? So this little empty space where we're going to be filming today is actually where Father's Riley goes. But he's moved that out of the way uh, to another securely located garage. Um, here is the Elise with its dust sheet on. Uh, you guys may remember this from the uh, Silverstone video we did, but we still haven't actually done a video on the at least driving it properly. Uh, so I do think that needs to happen sometime, but it's off the road now for the winter and it'll be back on in the spring, right? Yeah. Lovely. So maybe next year we can get that one done. This is my brother DJ, his uh, race car, say it, Ibiza, with a, uh, what was it? A two litre yeah. turbo. Yeah, I'll be bam, yeah. It's severely banned. It's banned, yes, unfortunately. Um, no, it's not blown up, it's just, um, the, yes. Um, well, basically, he's got an M3. <laughs> he's got an M3. This is on the back burner for now. Um, but you guys might remember this from the Castle Queen video we did. It wasn't necessarily the best produced video, but it's in there. Uh, and I don't think I've ever known this car to actually successfully run, but when it does, it's an absolute weapon. Yeah. But. That is the workshop. You can see it's actually like a, a super old structure, like really old. Ironically, we're doing this uh, because we can put a scimitar in here, leave it overnight for the paint to cure, um, and hopefully it won't get dust and shit on it. But if you look at the amount of, <laughs> the amount of dust and shit in here, yeah. Uh, I, hopefully it all just stays where it has done for the last hundred years. So here we are everyone, Reeds DIY stores on a Tuckton Road. Um, this father's shop is a really old building. Surely it's got to be one of the oldest in Plymouth, right? Yep, yep, it's well old. It used to be an old shipping or stable um, back in the day. And the, what uh, sort of period? Um, I think we're looking at about 1700, something like that. Yeah, okay. Um, and the pub next door was three cottages and that's where the farm workers were and the animals were kept in my shop and there was nothing else here apart from fields. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy isn't it? If you take away all the Victorian and the 30s and, and all that, yeah. there isn't anything around here other than these buildings. Yeah, right. Anyway, inside, um, it's very much, I think everyone, uh, young or old, uh, and however many times they've been in here, would describe it as Aladdin's Cave. Um, that's everyone has always called it Aladdin's Cave and uh, it's the sort of thing, uh, <laughs> these shelves are some of my favourite shelves <laughs> ever um, and uh, it doesn't matter what you're looking for, it's in here somewhere and uh, the only person who knows where anything is, is father <laughs> and I mean absolutely everything uh, <laughs> It's great. If you're in Plymouth or passing through Plymouth, you should check it out if you need anything. Uh, even seeds look. Anyway, we have got a couple of bits that we needed. A couple of paintbrushes. Uh, Father's been nice enough to give me some good quality ones that hopefully won't leave bristles behind. Especially when we're doing the top coat, that'll be important. And also, some new sanding discs, um, just to get the best bite and key in the uh, primer that we can. Father is sanding the top. Uh, he's going to sand the roof. 
and the sides because they're all pretty much good to go. Um, I am going to use uh, the filler that father's bought me here uh, and uh, fill uh, the last couple of bits. Just these two corners here are a bit much. Um, and also, we did the wiper hole yesterday, which actually looks really cool there. But there's the uh, water jet hole as well, which I, re I removed the jet yesterday. Um, so I just need to fill that in. Uh, obviously, there's the damage which we're not touching. There's also this bit here, which you can barely see, but you, it was just something that would annoy me over time. We've got the generator on uh, over in the corner, uh, powering, actually charging the Elise currently, um, and it's all systems go. Okay, everyone, so I have filled uh, the few bits that I needed to fill, um, uh, a couple of extra bits too, because I had some filler left over. That's the aerial, or not the aerial hole, sorry, the uh, washer jet hole. Uh, father's done a quick scour on the roof, um, but now I'm going to take over sanding. Father is going to start on the windscreen. I've already got the metal sort of surround out. Annoyingly, this really nice stainless steel surround that we're taking out doesn't go back in. It gets replaced with something like some sort of faux metal plastic thing, which is annoying, but it's the way that the modern ones are designed. And this is the good side, that side's even worse. Yeah, it is. Um, so what I'm thinking is, uh, as you quite rightly say, if I get a sharp knife on this, it looks like it's far stronger on the inside than the outside. So if I cut this away, we should just be able to push the windscreen out. That got there. Yeah. Okay, so it popped out and hit the wiper jet there. Onto the roof? Or not? Onto the roof, yes, good idea. Okay, the windscreen's out, and as you can see, that needs a fair bit of cleaning, I would say. Um, and here is the old aperture. So father has just discovered this, uh, this sort of bit of vinyl that goes over, oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't even let me fucking explain. <laughs> it's a bit of vinyl. There's a bit of vinyl that uh, it actually attaches to this bit here. I don't know, it's obviously just for looks. The whole car is indeed sanded now. My arm hurts a lot. I can barely hold it in the air and I've got pins and needles in both hands from using a sander all week. It's absolutely horrible. It's definitely the worst thing you can do when it comes to bodywork, uh, but also the best thing you can do. Um, so I've also gone over the car with white spirit as well to get sort of any dust and contaminants and everything like that off of it. I didn't film any of it because you've already watched the whole episode of that crap. So, uh, whilst I've been doing that, Father has cleaned the windscreen and has fitted the new seal to it. We've gone for this approach. Uh, we'll at least go this way first, we'll see what happens and uh, see if we can... I've got this kit which I did leave at home, I'm going to have to go and get that. <laughs> Not in the scimitar, um, but uh, what happens is you put some string behind it and uh, when you push the glass into the body, um, you kind of un you pull the string around it and that moves the lip of the seal over the seal of the car, if that makes sense. It'll probably make sense when we film it, uh, but uh, that's kind of on-ish, which is great. As you can see, QRG have sort of given you a bit of slack there, so we're going to trim that off and... Um, once we've got all that sorted, well, it will be time to put the new windscreen in, won't it, Father? <laughs> it's time to reveal the colour that uh, the scimitar is going to be. Um, I don't know other way to say this apart from it's uh, RAL 4007. I know all of you are going to go crazy. No, I'm joking. Of course, none of you know what that is, unless you're an actual paint aficionado. But cameraman come here and all will be revealed. Woo! Oh yes! <laughs> She's gonna be bright. Um, I do have uh, reasoning behind this and that is um, I've always wanted a purple car. I've always wanted a purple car. I kinda really would love it to look like this but that paint job cost Bam Margera I think it was like it was thousands and thousands of pounds. So 
I settled with 50 quid worth of paint from the internet. Lovely. First brush of the aubergine machine. <laughs> Is that the new name? Yeah, could be. Fantastic. And the reason we're only going to do this aperture, and I'm doing it roughly, and that is literally just so that we can get... Because this is the only time we're ever going to get to do this. In fact, by the looks of it, not even Reliant did this. So, <laughs> we should have, uh, when we do the proper paint job on the outside, uh, a lossless connection between that... Oh, shit. Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that it, it, on the outside of the seal and on the inside of the seal. It's worth mentioning that this paint is a uh, Technoid coach paint, as uh, you can sort of make out from this. Does it say on it, actually? Uh, Somewhere. It, it? it does, yeah, I yeah. can see it, yeah. Techaloid. Yeah, it says Techaloid as well. Okay, and basically what that means is it's an old sort of design uh, meant for coaches, farm machinery, things like that. It's called coach paint in some, you know, places. Uh, but um, it is, what do you also, what do you know it as? Um, oh, what was it called? Um, oh, repaint. Repaint? Yeah, uh, yeah, repaint. Back in the day, I painted a singer gazelle in it. Um, and it worked quite well, to be honest it's, with you. Obviously it's never gonna be properly as good as I mean even in the best case scenario is that it's just a solid color it's gonna have no depth at all um, that's the best case scenario the windscreen is prepped and ready to be put in and the paint is around the aperture and drying uh, but whilst that's drying we're gonna take out the uh, the rear quarters which are just ready to fall out as well to be honest by the looks of it aren't they Nice. Good, good. Do you reckon that could be causing some water ingress? It, it may. <laughs> but you have got plants growing. Oh yeah, yeah. This car's green. You ever see a Tesla doing that anytime soon? Well, you probably will with the amount that will be in landfills. And there we have it. The front uh, aperture is still drying from the paint. The rear window here is out, and as you saw questionable uh, sealant used or whatever the hell that was um, I just did this side as well and yeah they use some sort of maybe black stuff here so I don't know maybe this one did get replaced after the fact um, but hey it's all out now all ready to be cleaned up and uh, well put back in really I'm looking forward to seeing how easy and how hard that is cleaning up the glass here. How's it coming off, Father? Is it looking good? Yeah, it's all uh, quite agricultural. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, no, no surprises here. It's just um, lots of muck and a little tiny bit of sealant on oh, the other you one. You just destroyed my jackass uh, logo. No, no, it's fine. Look, look. It's no, good. no, it's not. Are you fine. really? Look, look, it's fine. I'm going to have to get new ones. Never mind. Uh, yeah, so um, we've, we've got all the detritus off so what I'm going to do now is um, move these out of the way take all the detritus outside and then come back and give them a bit of soapy water treatment indeed indeed right and also um, I mentioned a little bit earlier uh, we have absolutely everything we need apart from the window fitting kit which I left at home <laughs> So we're gonna, in a bit, uh, pull the scimitar in here. Now we've got the windows out, hopefully um, we can sort of uh, maneuver around the car enough in here, but we wanted to do the sort of dirty, grubby stuff outside and then move the car in when we were ready to. And we are almost ready to, so once we've done that, uh, my car will be out of the way and we can go and father the C-Max to go to my house to pick up the window installation kit that I forgot, even though it's the most important thing that I really needed to remember to bring today. Lovely. Hello. <laughs> well, things are cracking on at the speed of light here. We've got the windscreen with the seal on, good to go. Both rear quarters now with the seals on, good to go. They call me pick arsehole. Yes, yes, I'm sure they do. You don't need to do the whole frigging car. Yeah, I got carried away. Fine, let's go. All right. 
look at uh, the lighting situation in the Delamere workshop. <laughs> the force, Luke. <laughs> it's already shit in the paint. It's a bit loud in here. <laughs> We have gotten the kit of things. Uh, here it is. It's actually a Seedly kit. Uh, model WK2. Uh, comes in a package, you know, whatever, plastic and bits. But yeah, the main tool that it has, and the reason why I bought it, is this tool here, which Father's using the wrong way around currently. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, and the idea is that you put this tool around the outside of the windscreen and you lay a track of the uh, nylon sort of, uh, you know, rope. String? Rope? Twine. In the video I watched it was very easy. <laughs> yes. Father's favourite invention at the moment is soapy water. It's going on everything. I've never been so clean, this car. Um, oh, it smells nice as well. What's in there? Oh, it's just um, washing up liquid. Washing up liquid. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, environmentally friendly washing up liquid, I'll have you know. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, your car is green. Yeah, 16 miles to the gallon. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's environmentally friendly, then. Friendly. So it's in, and it's, no, it's not, it's just resting in place. You can see that the string is inside the car going down. So as long as you can get the beginning sort of lip over the inside of the fiberglass, you should be able to pull that twine out and the rest of the lip will follow it and it'll just, oh, it's just gonna work perfectly first time. We tried uh, putting it in uh, the seal fitting to the glass and then putting that as one into the car, hopefully pulling the rope around it and it popping into place magically. Turns out <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, of course, as everything ever. Um, but more importantly, with the scimitar in particular, the way that the clearances work on the dashboard and everything, with it in place, it's not possible, really, we don't think, at least with our limited experience. So what we're going to try now is putting the seal in the body first and then doing the rope thing with getting the glass in where you've got more access to the glass than the actual seal going onto the body. That makes sense? Okay, so it turns out this is a little bitch. Um, what we have done is <laughs> this bottom left corner. And as you can see, that's fabulous. That's in there, that's not going anywhere. Slaps roof of a door seal and whatever. Um, but um, we've only got half an hour left of the day and of course, because the car's here and I can't drive it, that means that father has to give me a lift home. So, um, we, yeah, I've got half an hour. And what we're gonna do now is basically just throw some paint around because there's no point me getting here tomorrow and then instantly painting the car and not being able to touch it. So what we're gonna do is chuck some paint on it now so that that can dry-ish overnight. And that means tomorrow when I get in that uh, it will be cured somewhat enough for me to touch things like this. Starting with, I reckon, those door apertures because you've got new door seals to go in, which I can do tomorrow. Um, but uh, I won't be able to if the, if the paint's still wet. So uh, we'll do those now and I might do some bigger panels as well. Maybe the front uh, bits here and maybe even the roof as well. But I'm just going to throw that on for half an hour. And that is it, everyone. The end of another lovely episode. And I know what you're thinking. My God, Mike's dragging this out quite a bit. But I, <laughs> it was just so much footage to fit in uh, just a couple of episodes. Don't worry, though, the final episode will be next week, so tune in for that one. Will the colour actually look any good in sunlight? Will I do any good of the paint finish? Will we even ever get the windows in? All this and more next week. See you then.